If you've ever wanted to play Skyrim VR, then this video is for you. Skyrim is one of the greatest games ever made, and it's 100% playable in VR, effectively making it the greatest VR game ever made. Except for the fact that it kind of sucks in VR until you add some basic mods. But as soon as you do add those basic mods, Skyrim VR arguably is the most fun that you can have in virtual reality, especially if you've never played Skyrim, like me when I started playing it in VR for the first time. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to install the best Skyrim mod pack out there, the fundamentals upgrades and stuff or foos mod pack and before you start freaking out this mod pack is super quick and easy to install thanks to wabajack it's literally a one-click installation that said there are a few things you need to do before and after the installation for the best experience and that's what this video is for there's timestamps below because this video is kind of long but it includes everything you need to know to get started with this mod pack what some of the mods do and even how to add even more mods on top of the mod pack so why foos in the first place why not some of the other popular skyrim mod packs out there. Well, basically, Foos is meant to provide you with a simple modular mod list that includes all of the essential and optional VR mods, some basic graphical mods, and even some gameplay enhancing mods. The main place this pack differs from other mod packs is that it's lacking a lot of the major graphical mods, but I would argue that this is a good thing, especially if you just want an enhanced vanilla experience. A while back before Foos existed, I installed another mod pack and I could barely play the game. Like, I literally spent a grand to upgrade from on RTX 26 to a 2080 Ti just to get 20 more frames per second with that specific mod pack. Now you may think I'm exaggerating, but no, I'm just that awkwardly incapacitated that I spent a thousand dollars to go from an average of 50 FPS to 70 FPS in a decade old game. Let's just say I'm not the crunchiest pickle in a jar. Since then, the new Foos mod list has been released and it is hands down the best mod pack for Skyrim VR because it runs well and includes everything you need for the best Skyrim VR experience. And if you do have a NASA PC and you do want to push its limits, you can always always use Foos as a base mod list and then add more mods on top of it, which is what I'm doing personally. So with that out of the way, let's start with the installation by preparing your PC. First, you'll want to install Microsoft Visual C++ Redistributable Package. You might already have this installed, but go to link in the description anyways and download the x64 version of Visual Studio for 2015 through 2022, just to be sure. Then install the .NET versions 5.0. Again, this is linked in the description. You'll want the 64 version of both the console and the desktop desktop apps, download and install them both. Next, if you've never changed your Steam or Oculus render settings, you can ignore this step, but if you have changed it, you'll want to change it back to 100% in Steam or 1.0 in Oculus. Super sampling this way is inefficient and is not recommended for this mod pack. You may also want to disable the Steam overlay, which can cause some issues with EMBs. These issues are rare, so you could just skip this step, but if you end up using an ENB and notice some issues, this is why. I personally just disable it for only Skyrim by going to the game's properties in Steam. Now, if you don't speak English natively, you'll want to change the game's language to English. The entire mod list is in English, and most of the mods you'll find are in English as well. To change it to English, just go to the Steam Properties window, navigate to the Language tab, and then select English. The next thing you'll want to do is clean up Skyrim. If you've never installed Skyrim on that PC before, then you can skip this step. Otherwise, go to Steam, right-click on Skyrim VR, click Properties, Local Files, and Browse. With this window open, go back to Steam and uninstall the game. When it's done, uninstalling, delete any other Skyrim VR files that might have been left there. Then go to the Windows search bar and type percentage sign local app data percentage sign and hit enter. Then look for Skyrim VR and delete it if it exists. Then navigate to your documents folder, my games, and then delete the Skyrim VR folder there. With every trace of Skyrim completely wiped from your PC, you're ready to move on to the next step, which is to install Skyrim. Now before you install it, you want to make sure that it doesn't install to the default common folders located location that Steam just installs everything to. The best way to do this is if you have more than one drive, you can easily create a Steam library folder on the root of one of your other drives. To do this, go to the Steam settings menu, downloads tab, and hit Steam library folders. Hit the plus sign to add a new folder and select the drive you want to install it on. Then if you want, you can select the three dots and make this your default install location. Or if you don't want to do that, then when you go to install Skyrim, you can hit the drop down and select which drive you want to install it on. Now, if you only have a single drive, it's a little bit harder, but you can still do this. Steam won't let you install any games outside of the default folder without a tool, which I'll link to below. Just follow the guide on that tool's GitHub to set it up. With that out of the way, install the game, and then the last thing you'll want to do is actually open the game and run it one time before installing the mod pack. This is so the game can fully install itself and create the necessary folders it needs to run. Once you're in the starting area of the game, you can go ahead and quit. Now it's time for installing Wabajack and the mod pack itself. Go to the root folder of the drive where you want to install the mod pack. 
back. Keep in mind that you'll need 45 gigabytes of space. Here, create two folders, one called Wabajack and the other called Foos, F-U-S. Now go to the link in the description to download Wabajack and place the exe file that you downloaded into the Wabajack folder. Then go into the folder and then go ahead and run wabajack.exe. This will install Wabajack and then you'll see this screen. From here, hit browse mod list and search for Foos. Hit the download and then the play button to then be brought to this screen. And here you'll select the mod list target location. Set that to the Foos folder we made just a moment ago. The download location should automatically be set. Now go ahead and start the installation. And once you start, you'll be prompted to log into Nexus mods. Now, if you don't have an account, go ahead and make one. And it's highly recommended that you pay for Nexus Premium to make this process quicker and easier. It's only a few bucks for one month and you can literally unsubscribe. So you're only paying for the one month. Without Nexus Premium, you're just gonna have to click download on each and every mod. And there's literally hundreds of mods in this mod pack. So it's just gonna take more time that way, but you can do it. With Premium, it auto downloads and finishes very quickly, depending on how fast your internet and computer is. On my home computer, it only took me about 20 minutes. And at my work computer where the internet isn't as great, it took me about an hour. Also keep in mind that the mod pack can sometimes fail and this is fine. Just restart Wabajack and try again. It'll pick up from where it left off and finish the installation. If it keeps failing and you're not sure why, go into the Discord and I'm sure somebody will be able to help you out. Once it's finished installing, go to the Foos folder and look for a program called Mod Organizer. Go ahead and open it and this is where you're going to manage all of your mod list and where you're going to launch the game each time you want to play. So once you have the mod list installed and before you open the game, we need to customize the mod list a little bit. Basically, Foos comes with four different profiles for you to choose from. Foos is just the basic mods that are bare bones for a good VR experience. Use this if you just want the VR mods, but an otherwise completely vanilla experience. Foos Row is the same basic VR mods, plus some visual improvements. These visual improvements stay true to the original game, but just look a little bit better. Foos Row Da includes all the VR and visual mods, plus some extra gameplay altering mods. This is nice for people that have played Skyrim in the past and want a new experience. Kongar is a specific profile that matches what the mod creator Kongar uses for his playthroughs. Basically, it's Foos Row Da, but with a few additions. What I personally like to do is play the Foos Row Da profile and then get rid of some specific mods that I don't like. But you can choose whatever you want. To choose a profile, just hit this icon in the top left and then choose the profile you want to use. Once you have a profile selected, you should still do some customization. So what I like to do to make things easier is to actually create a new profile for me specifically. To do that, just select whichever profile you plan on customizing, then copy it and give it a name. Now make sure that you select that new profile so that now any changes you make will be saved to that profile and won't affect the standard profiles that came with the mod list. With that done, let's go through some basic recommended customization. At the top of this mod list, there's a few optional mods that you need to decide if you want, no matter which profile you're using. Open Composite is a mod that allows you to play the game without SteamVR running in the background. This gives you a nice performance boost, so I highly recommend it if you're using an Oculus headset. I personally don't use it despite using a Quest 2 because Open Composite only works with Airlink and I prefer virtual desktop. I also have a damn good PC, so I don't need the performance boost nearly as much as some other people. But if you're struggling for performance and use Oculus, there's no reason to not use Open Composite. Another amazing way to improve performance is to choose from some of the included upscaler mods. These all work in a very similar way to increase the resolution of the game without actually increasing the resolution. The idea is to make the game look better without any cost to the performance. DLSS and FSR both run the game at a lower resolution to boost performance, but it upscales so that it looks almost as good as it would at the standard resolution. The difference is that DLSS is only available for NVIDIA graphics cards, while FSR works with any graphics card. If you're having a hard time running the game, definitely enable one of these and mess with their settings. DLAA runs the game at the same standard resolution as you'd normally have, then it upscales it without taking a significant performance hit. Once we're in game, I'll show you how to adjust the settings for all of these mods. Another way to make the game look better is with some of the ENB or reshade options. These basically improve the lighting of the game, but use up a lot of performance. I recommend trying the game without these for the first time, and if you feel like your PC can handle it, you can always enable them later. The Simplicity ENB is the recommended ENB. It's very vibrant and colorful, and I personally don't love it, especially compared to some of the other ENB options, but it is more lightweight. The High Fidelity ENB has two versions, LCD or OLED. Just pick whatever matches your VR headset. 
Since I'm on Quest 2, I'm using the LCD one. The goal of this ENB is realism, performance, and visual fidelity. It was made from scratch for VR, so it's probably the best all-around ENB available. The Luminous ENB also aims to look natural, but with a slight film look, as they put it. Unlike the high fidelity ENB, it adds subtle bloom along with several other special effects. The Sensorium ENB is another really colorful ENB that has a very fantasy feel to it. I almost feel like I'm in a beautiful painting while using this ENB. Ariel's Dream is very popular as an ENB. It's slightly darker than the other options while still providing a warm and colorful atmosphere. It's not my favorite, but it is a good option. The Azurian ENB might be my favorite because it looks so damn good. It's meant to pair with two other mods included in this mod pack, the Azurite Weather mod and the Obsidian Mountain Fogs mod. And so it just looks really great, but it uses the most performance out of all of these ENBs. Now, like I said, try the mod pack without these first. And if you think you have the headroom, go ahead and try them out to see if it's worth it. Reshades achieve a similar goal as the ENBs to make the lighting and everything look better, but they use way less performance. They also just don't look nearly as good, but if you're hurting for performance, there's three options you can use. Glamour is the recommended reshade and can actually be run on top of an ENB. It adds extra shadows through ambient occlusion. The sharper eye is a subtle effect that gets rid of blur and what they call a gray mist in your headset. VR Vision works similarly to Sharper Eye to make things look a little bit sharper, and it's actually recommended to use with Azurite Weathers, a mod that's already included in this list. Now, you would not want to use Sharper Eye and VR Vision together since they're both doing essentially the same thing. Compare them both and pick the one that you like more. But what you can do is run Glamour on top of either Sharper Eye or VR Vision, and if you really want to, you can run all of those on top of an ENB. Again, only if you have the performance to do all that and if you think it looks good. Next, you need to choose some controller bindings. If you you use the valve index there's specific instructions for which binding to use so make sure that you read the controller bindings guide for this mod list which is linked in the description as for me on quest i'm using the kangar or the kangar spell siphon binding the biggest difference between these and the vanilla bindings is that it moves the menu and shout buttons to other buttons freeing up y and b to be used with vrik gestures now i'll talk about vrik gestures later in the video but essentially you'll be able to assign different spells weapons and actions to specific gestures so for example, I usually have it so that when I press B and swipe up with my hand, it'll equip a spell that I use pretty often. And then if I press B and swipe down, it unequips all spells. Assigning spells and actions to gestures like this is a great way to play the game without having to open menus all of the time, which breaks immersion. So now the difference between the Kangar and the Kangar spell siphon bindings is that both of them have the menu button moved to the right thumbstick, but for the shouts button, the Kangar binding gets rid of the shouts button completely. The idea is that you'll use the VRIK gestures to use shouts and so you don't actually need a button for shouts and powers. Now that said, if you still want a dedicated shout button and probably if you're just getting started with this mod pack, I recommend the Kangar spell siphon binding which moves the shouts to the left grip. I personally find this annoying because then I can't pick anything up with my left hand, but it's good to start off with that one and then when you have VRIK figured out, you can switch to the one that gets rid of the shouts button completely. Now with your binding selected, there's just two other mods that everyone needs to change real quick. I personally like to turn off this auto sneak and jump VR mod. This mod basically makes it so that when you're crouching in real life, you're sneaking in the game. This is rather annoying when I want to play sitting down, so I just turn it off. There's also some optional interface mods. So for example, the clear HUD gets rid of the entire HUD if you're looking for a super immersive experience. The HUD, by the way, is stuff like your compass and sneak eye. I personally leave these the default way it comes with the mod, but if you want full immersion, you can get rid of the HUD entirely or shrink it down or, or whatever. You have all customization right here. Outside of those mods, I recommend reading through the noteworthy gameplay mod section of the Foos Guide to see if you want all or some of these mods to make your gameplay better. If you want a completely vanilla experience and you're using Foos or Foos Row, you can just skip this step. But if you're using Foos Row Da, like me, here's some things that I personally decided to change. I got overwhelmed with the amount of spells added to the game with this mod list. It has three different spell mods, Apocalypse, Mysticism, and Triumvirate, however you say that. I decided to disable Apocalypse because it adds so many annoying and game breaking spells. So for example, a popular spell, Deep Storage, allows you free access to infinite storage no matter where you are in the game. It basically renders the weight system useless. And since it has so many spells like that that are just game breaking, I just decided to get rid of it and the Valkyrie patch for it. I also decided to get rid of Spellforge. It basically reimagines how you learn spells in the game, but after 
looking at it, I think it just adds too much complexity for me. I'm perfectly happy just buying spells from a shop and then eating the book to learn the spell, especially because I'm still trying to go with a more vanilla experience with just a few fun mods. Beyond that, I enabled the B-Haptics mod since I have a B-Haptics vest and plan on using it. I also enabled Strange Runes, which adds glowing glyphs when casting spells or scrolls and it just looks awesome. I enabled Frozen Electrocuted Combustion and make sure to enable both the VR and the normal mod. This adds visual effects to enemies when they die from various elements. I removed Unlimited Sprinting because that's another game-breaking mod and in my opinion, I just want an enhanced vanilla experience. I removed Thunder Child, a mod that adds a bunch of shouts. Again, going for a more vanilla experience, I don't want to get overwhelmed with all of the options, so maybe on future playthroughs after I've beaten the game a couple of times, I'll enable it again just for some fun. Realistic AI detection makes sneaking more realistic and you can choose the difficulty. I kept it on the recommended medium, but if you want it to be harder, you can change it or disable it completely if you like the original system. I also went ahead and added Sophia and Lucian, both are optional followers, cause you know, why not? One last mod I decided to change was the setting for the magic improvements mod. Basically this mod allows you to adjust the angle of spells as they come out of your hand. The Foos mod pack adjusts it to come out of your palms, which for some reason just felt really weird to me, and it was kind of hard to aim. So I decided to change it back to the default angle by right clicking the mod, selecting open explorer, go to SKSE, plugins, then open misvr.ini with a text file, then change the magic rotation yaw back to zero, save the file and close it. Now there's some other mods worth looking into. Again, if you don't know what they all do, check out the GitHub mod page. It'll tell you what everything does. Now the nice thing about this list is that it's really lightweight and meant to be used as a starting point to create your own modded Skyrim experience. And in my opinion, it's lacking a lot of the really good graphical mods as well as some really interesting gameplay mods. Now the issue with graphics mods is that it can really hurt your performance. So if you're already struggling for performance, don't go adding a bunch of graphical mods to the list. Just keep it as is. But I personally have a 3090, so performance is not an issue. So I'm currently in the process of adding a ton of graphics mods and experimenting to find the perfect list. Once I have my own list together, I'll probably make another video demoing it and showing you how to install it, but don't expect that to come anytime soon. And honestly, I don't know if it'll ever come. Modding is really difficult and time consuming. But if I do finish that, I'll put links in the video's description. Now that's regarding graphics mods. Outside of that, there's a lot of lightweight gameplay mods not included in this list. For example, if you wanted to, you could turn Skyrim into a gritty survival game with camping, hunger, and everything you need to survive. If something like that interests you, my friend SoulBC has some great videos for gameplay enhancing mods, which I'll link to in the description. Now, all of that said, if you do want to add some mods to this list and you don't know how, skip to the end of this video and I'll include a quick guide on how to do that. Now, with all of your mods set up, it's time to start the game. To do this, you have to launch it from Mod Organizer 2. If you launch the game from Steam, it'll be a completely vanilla experience, so make sure that you always launch it from the Mod Organizer. Just make sure Steam VR is running and that your controllers are on, then hit this play button in the top right of MO2. I recommend making a shortcut to Mod Organizer and placing it on your desktop to make it easier to launch the game quickly. Also, keep in mind that the first time you launch the game, it'll be slow and it might even crash as you're opening it. This is okay, just keep reopening the game until it works. Also, the intro of the game is extremely bugged with these mods. Everything else works amazing, but the intro specifically is broken, so it's recommended that you run the game from Steam and play through it without any mods first. Or you could watch a video on YouTube of the introduction or skip it altogether if you've already played it a thousand times before. Now, once you launch the game, there's some basic settings that you'll want to adjust for the mods that you installed. All right, so here we are in game, and I'm gonna show you just one mod in particular that's very important, and it's the VRIK mod. And the VRIK mod is how I have this um, rather muscular naked body that you're looking at right now. It does a lot more than that though. Along with giving you this beautiful, beautiful body, the VRIK mod is also a gesture mod that allows you to pull out spells, weapons, and things like that. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So we're gonna open up the menu. We're gonna go down to mod configuration. This is your MCM menu. This is where you can adjust all of the mods that we have installed. Scroll all the way down to the bottom to VRIK. So here you can adjust your height and stuff like that. I'll show you how to do the calibration in a second. You can ignore this for now. Under controls, go to left button and you're gonna to wanna to set that to be your Y button. And then for the right button, you're gonna to wanna to set that to be the B button. So what that means is, is whenever you wanna do one of these gestures, you press B on your right hand or Y on your left hand and then do the gesture. There's other settings here, like you can show the compass, you can have it go uh, when your left palm is facing up, when your right palm is up, 
whatever. Now let's go to gesture config. So here we're gonna select right hand B press. And then under that, we're gonna set that to press and up. Okay, so that means when I press the button and swipe my hand up, something's gonna happen. We're gonna assign that right now. So under choose its gesture action, we're gonna change that to change outfit, weapons, or spells. So here we have all the different things that you can change. Here's for the left hand, this is for the right hand where it's relevant. So we're, we're using our right hand B press. So that means we're gonna want our right hand to be equipped with a spell. So we're gonna select that. We're gonna scroll down to just flames. Perfect. And that's it. Real quick before we exit out of this menu, let's change this. So now we're going to do right hand B press, but we're going to go press and down. There we go. So we're going to do press and down. Again, you're going to come over here, change that so that it's change weapon outfits or spells. And then you're going to select right hand weapon or spell, and it's going to be unequip current weapon or spell. And I like to set this for my right hand and my left hand. So for the left hand, also unequip current weapon or spell. There you go. Real quick, we're going to set one more. So this time we're going to do a left hand Y press. And for this one, we want to do something weird, something you're not going to do very often. So you have combo gestures. For example, we can do um, left and then right, or we can do down and then up. Let's do down and then up. And then for this, we're going to change it to not just change outfit, weapon or spell, but we can actually have it cast a spell or shout. Now I like to do this for like casting a summoning. If I want to summon something, I can just cast it. Or if there's a spell that has like an effect that I want just casted as opposed to being equipped. And it also works great for shouts. So we're going to select that. We're going to choose VRIK calibration power. All right. And remember that's down and up. So now let's go back, exit out of this. So now if I press B and swipe up, I have fire. And then if I want to get rid of that, I can just press B, swipe down no more spells it de-equips them all it's very nice to just be able to swipe have my fire put it away done now with my left hand we're gonna go down and then up and that's gonna start the vrik calibration power so whenever you change from standing or sitting you're gonna want to do this that's why i have it equipped so something easy like down and up and what you're gonna want to select is default size and then you're gonna want to do vr scale the vr calibration is to fix it if you're like floating over your body like this or maybe you're like crouched down the entire time. Again, just do that quick gesture and there you go. Now they do have a brand new VRIK gesture assignment power that you can use. Uh, there's some instructions here on how to use it. So I've activated the power. Here you're gonna select convert unassigned to cast. You're gonna hit okay. Basically the way the assignment power gesture works is you need to perform the power assignment gesture, whatever. Then you need to equip ability, whether that's a, a spell, a shout, whatever. Then you want to perform the gesture you want for that ability. So, you know, the swipe left or right or whatever, and then repeat from two until you're done. So you can assign a whole ton of different gestures and then you cast the uh, power gesture assignment thing to stop. All right. So with the power gesture assignment, whatever the crap it's called uh, happening right now, you're going to open up menu. We're gonna go to magic and we're gonna go to healing. We're gonna to equip that in my right hand and then we're gonna swipe left. And then we can choose if we want to cast or equip. We're gonna have it equip. So there you go, we just did that. So now I can press the grip button to get rid of the gesture thing. And now I have that gesture is now equipped. So again, this gesture assignment thing is great if you have the grip button set to be able to do powers. But if you don't have that set, if you're going full no powers button, no shouts button, then it's not as easy. You just have to do it in the regular menu. One more thing that the VRIK thing can do that I'll show you right now is you can assign different swords, different weapons to different slots on your body. So I just found this sword here. What I can do is go down and let's say I want to sheath it right here. I can just go there, hit grip. Now I have equipped my sword down at my side. And if I want to pull it out, I'll just use grip, pull it out just like that. I can also equip it on my right side and same thing, just pull it out. I can equip it over my shoulder also. Actually, I don't think I can equip this because this is a one hand sword, but you can control all of that. You can decide what to equip and where. So I think two handed stuff has to go over your shoulder. One handed stuff can go on your waist. You can put daggers on your arm. You can do all kinds of stuff and it's all stuff you can change within the menu. And this is very nice because it's very immersive. If I'm in battle, I can swipe up, cast my fire, put that away. I can reach down, pull out my sword, and I can change all kinds of stuff without ever having to open my menu. It's fantastic. It just makes everything about, you know, combat way more fun. So that's the VRIK mod. 
it's the best mod out there and that's why i want to give it some special attention to just show you how to use it if you've never used it before now if you enable dlaa dlss or fsr you can adjust those settings once the game is open by hitting the end key on your keyboard here you can select the upscaler method and you can change the quality level quality is the closest to native resolution followed by balanced then performance and then ultra performance with the lowest resolution also here you can enable fixed foveated rendering to get a little extra performance boost this essentially renders the edges of the screen at a lower resolution while keeping the center at full resolution you can enable the debug overlay to see which areas of the screen are affected and you can adjust the size of the areas that's rendered at full or lower resolution now outside of vrik and some of those upscaler settings there's some other in-game settings that you'll want to change and kongar the creator of this mod list has a great simple straight to the point video showing you how to set yourself up for the first time after launching the game so instead of just repeating what he says go watch his 13 minute video or read the official guide on github before you start playing the game it's worth it but once you do go through some settings you're now ready to play the greatest vr game ever made only because it just so happens to be the greatest game ever made and they ported it to vr now as promised to close out this video here's a quick guide on how to add mods to the fusro dom mod list if you feel so inclined before you start make sure that you're working on a new profile so that if you ever want to you can always go back to the original profiles and also make sure that you're logged into nexus in mod organizer 2 by going to the settings then the nexus tab now if you don't already know nexus is the website, the go-to place for Skyrim mods, and there you can use pretty much any Skyrim special edition mods, as well as mods made specifically for Skyrim VR. Once you find a mod that interests you, read that mod's specific installation instructions. Many mods require other mods to work, or they need to be put in a specific load order, which I'll show you how to do in a second. If they don't have any instructions, you'll be fine just installing it the normal way. To actually install it, go to the Files tab and make sure you select the right file and hit the Mod Manager download. Often there'll be different file options here so again refer to the installation instructions if you're not sure about which one to download now open mod organizer 2 and go to the downloads tab the mod you just downloaded should be there double click it or right click and hit install to start installing it some mods have an installer window that opens up to guide you through some of the options and other mods will just install right away in either situation make sure you rename the mod to include the words no delete in brackets and a space afterwards Type it exactly like this with the N and D capitalized and everything. This is so that when you install an update to the mod list, it doesn't delete the mods that you added. I don't really recommend updating the mod list because that can break your save sometimes, but just in case, I still do this with any mod that I add. Once it's installed, it will be at the very bottom of your mod list. To keep things organized, click on the tool icon and create a separator, name it whatever you want, and then drag it above the mod that you just installed. This will keep your new mod separate from the rest of the mod list. Also make sure to check the new mod Mod, otherwise it won't be enabled. Now there's two types of mods that you can install. I'm not sure what the technical words for it are, but there's mods that will just replace or add files to the game, and then there's mods that are known as plugins. If you click on the plugins tab here, you'll see how many plugins that you have installed. Notice that this number is less than 255, which is the max amount of plugins that you can have installed for Skyrim. This is a limitation of the game itself. If you need more than 255 plugins, there's a way to combine plugins so that you're under the number. So just keep that in mind if you do need to combine plugins because you're adding that many mods there's plenty of tutorials out there that will show you how to do that also keep in mind that some mods will say that they function as esl files and so they don't count towards your plugin limit this isn't actually true for vr all plugins no matter what will count towards your 255 limit which means vr is slightly more limited in the number of mods that you can have but if you're smart with merging it really isn't that big of a deal now beyond all that your load order matters when opening the game the mods higher up on the list are loaded first and the bottom of the list is loaded last. So for example, let's say you installed a new texture mod that's replacing a wall texture, for example. It's not a plugin or anything, it's just replacing a game file. If you have multiple texture mods installed and they all change that same wall texture, the one that's at the bottom of the list will be what you actually see in game. You can see which mods have conflicts with each other by selecting the mod in question, and then other mods will highlight green if they're being overwritten by the mod selected, or they'll be highlighted red if they're overriding the mod in question. So with that information, just adjust the order of the mods in your list so that the textures and files that you like the most are at the bottom of the list. Now that's just for the entire mod list. For the plugins, load order also matters. First off, make sure you don't use the auto sort option because it breaks the mod list. So instead, if the mods instructions don't say anything specific about the load order, go ahead and just leave it at the bottom or try placing it next to similar mods. So for example, keep your NPC mods together, keep your VR 
our gameplay mods together, keep your graphics mods together. And then if the instructions tell you to install it before or after a certain mod or certain types of mods, then you can move it around to the appropriate location more easily. Now that said, I've left most of the new mods that I've added at the bottom of the list and I haven't had much issues. So just make sure you're reading the install instructions carefully for each mod because some do have specific instructions that you need to follow. Otherwise, you should be good. The only rule to make sure that Foos runs as intended is that D Din Diolod or whatever it's called needs to be near the bottom and then Synthesis must be the last mod in the plugins load order. So I just went ahead and grabbed those and some of the mods that look related to those down to the bottom of the list below all of the other plugins. Just do this as a last step to make sure that everything works. And that's it. That's a basic guide on how to add mods to the list. It can be very time consuming to add lots of mods, which is why Wabajack is such an amazing tool, but it can also be a lot of fun browsing Nexus mods to find new fun things to add. I recommend playing through the game a bit, and then if you find something specific that you want to change, see if there's a mod for it. Maybe you're playing and notice that a specific part of the game looks bad, or maybe you're getting bored with the gameplay mechanics. Whatever it is, there's probably a mod that's perfect for you. At the same time, it's not recommended to mod too much while you're in the middle of a playthrough. This is because some more complicated mods can actually break your saves. So just be careful, and if you ever add a mod that causes issues, you can always remove it by disabling it in the list. Also, don't feel like you have to have every single mod on Nexus to get the best experience. Oftentimes, modders will spend more time modding the game than actually just playing it. And that's because there's this big feeling of FOMO if you feel like you're missing out on all of the perfect mods for the perfect mod list. But the truth is there isn't a perfect mod list. So unless modding is just a ton of fun for you, don't spend an excessive amount of time trying to perfect the game before you play it. Just go out and play with the Foos mod list don't worry about getting every single mod perfect. Now, all of that said, I'll be working on perfecting my own mod list because I have an insatiable feeling of FOMO and I want to make sure that I'm getting a peak Skyrim experience. So if I ever do succeed at making that perfect mod list, I'll link to it here for anyone that wants to check it out. And that's it. Thanks for watching.